at the Greenville campus. And uh, if it's your first time at Fuse, we are so glad that you're here. Come on, everyone across the state, make some noise for all of our friends. If it's their first time, come on, we're glad you're here. And uh, we just got back a few weeks ago from a little thing called the Gauntlet. Who had a good time at the Gauntlet? Come on. If, uh, if you weren't there, make sure you're there next year and uh, just lean in and listen for a moment. Uh, I've just been so humbled by the thousands of stories of life change that took place at Gauntlet. And uh, can we make some noise for all of our group leaders? You guys are the heroes. We love you guys. And uh, man, just story after story and shout out to our, our new sixth graders that are in the, in the room. Come on, make some noise for them. We're glad you're here. And, uh, but the thing that took place at Gauntlet, there is still more and more that God has for us. And I'm really excited to share with you tonight. If we haven't met yet, my name is Josh Bull. I get to be part of the team here. And uh, I was loving what Nellie was sharing around art. Are there any artists out there? Come on, give me a wave. I've got some artists. I love it. We all have different dreams and things that we might be talented in, but I wanted to show you a picture from the Sistine Chapel. You might have heard of this uh, in history class. This uh, beautiful painting right here was done many, many years ago by a man named Michelangelo. You might have heard of this, but this right here, everyone listen. When you look up there, there's beautiful artistry and images that uh, is just so beautiful and you can go visit it. Uh, but what, what I wanted to show you is there was a story about when Michelangelo was painting uh, this picture right here. Is he was in the corners, in the dark places where not many people could see. And there's a story that goes that someone walked past him one day and asked him a question, why do you care about that? And he responded and said, because God sees. He says that God sees, that God sees the unseen things, that God sees every aspect. And I wanna talk to us tonight about this idea that how will we live our life and the unseen and the places that we would live that would ultimately live a life of significance. And we live in a world that craves to do significant things. And if you've got uh, your guides here or you've got your notebooks, you can write this down is, I just think that a significant life is obedience to Jesus. You can write that anywhere down on the side or whatever you want, but a significant life is obedience to Jesus. You may not have all the notoriety and everyone know your name. You may not do these things that are written in the history books, but I just believe that a significant life is a life of simple obedience to Jesus. And tonight, I want to share around uh, from the book of Proverbs. We're gonna be in Proverbs chapter six. So if you've got your Bibles, you can turn there with me, Proverbs chapter six, or you can read along upon the guided notes in a moment. We're gonna be talking about uh, this idea of significance and living a life of impact and something that I think wages war against this. And so I just wanna encourage you, if you've got your guided notes or your Bible, uh, this is just what we're trying to encourage you. You can circle a word that stands out to you, but we're gonna go through this line by line tonight. And I believe it's gonna encourage you. So no matter if you've been following Jesus for a really long time or you just started or maybe you don't follow Jesus, I just believe there's something on the table for every single one of you. Are you with me? Say yeah. yeah. Say it louder, say yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Proverbs chapter six, uh, verse six, it says this. Go to the ant. Everyone say ant. Oh, you sluggard. Say sluggard, what a word, sluggard. I need you to say it louder, sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. You might wanna circle that, be wise. Without having any chief, officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in the summer. I reckon you might wanna underline in the summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, A poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. I wanna talk from this idea of uh, the tale of the slug and the ant. I wanna introduce you to the slugs. Look at this slug. I got a nice slug for you. Say hello, slug. 
Slugs, uh, they don't really do much. Like they're chubby, they're just kind of chilling, they're just kind of just kind of cruising through life. You know what I mean? That's my boy, the slug. He's just kind of just kind of there. You know what I'm saying? Now everyone say, hey, ant. Come on, ant. Come on out here. Look at my man, the ant. I love the ant. The tale of the slug and the ant. What we're gonna look at is this parable, uh, this parable, sorry, this story are really looking at the slug and the ant. Because here's what I wanna tell you. We've all got some slug in us. We've all got some slug in us. I've got some slug. Look at your neighbor and say, you've got some slug. And tonight, what I want us to do is with a little bit of slug in us, a little bit of maybe laziness, and maybe a little bit of kind of cruise control, we're gonna look at the ants. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're looking at the ant. And the ant tonight is, I think, something that we can learn from. There is uh, this, what we're reading about, that I think the slug simply says this. This is the cry of the slug, just a little more, just a little more. That's what I think the slug does, is he just wants a little more, a little more food, a little more sleep. There's a little more, maybe laziness. And that's what we're gonna get around tonight. And so we're gonna pray and then we're gonna dive in. Are you ready for the Word of God? Say, yeah. Yeah. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all that you're doing in and through Fuse. God, I thank you for uh, what you're doing here. And I just pray that uh, you would meet with us tonight and you would speak uh, to your students. I know you love them so much and I love them. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you'd be with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. I, uh, I, li- I got some table tennis balls. Who likes table tennis balls? Do you call them table tennis balls or ping pong balls? What do you call them? <laughs> ping pong, sorry, I'm Australian. Just forgive me, okay? I, uh, I brought this up on stage because I just love collecting ping pong balls, okay? I've got uh, 79 ping pong balls in here to be specific. Uh, you want me to be dramatic? Do you know that on average, the average human lives for 79 years? And so what I did was I put 79 ping pong balls in this container right here to represent one for every year of our lives. But you know these orange balls down here, there's 33, say 33. There's 33 of these. Now on average, the average person spends 33 years either sleeping or trying to sleep in their whole life. How crazy is that? So 33, so the remaining white ripe here represent when you're awake, when you're in school, the job that you might have, the friendships, the way that you spend your life awake is the white ping pong balls. And what I wanted to ask you tonight, Fuse, is how will you live your life? How do you wanna spend your time? How do you wanna spend each year of your life. Because it's easy in life to drift through life. We wake up, we eat some food, we go to school, or you're in summertime just kind of chilling, doing whatever you do, working a job, whatever it might be. We might come home, we do an assignment, we might go to practice, we might hang with some friends, whatever it might be. We scroll on TikTok for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Then we finally go to bed. Your parents are yelling at you, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. You finally go to bed. And then you wake up and you do it again. You get older and older, like you seniors, you're considering college and how are you gonna spend your college years? You go off to college maybe or you work a job and you get older and older and older, but do you ever consider what will be the story of your life? What will be the legacy of your life, Fuse? How will you spend the years of your life? 79 years is not guaranteed. My mom passed away at 48 years old. Tragically, and I think about the legacy of her life, that I am her legacy, the way that she lived her life, and I think about it often, how will I spend every year of my life? And I pray that the story of my life would be one of kingdom, that it will be following Jesus, saying yes to Jesus. Even when the world tells me to go another way, I will follow Jesus. And so tonight, what I want us to think about is the 79 years that we might have to live. Maybe more, maybe less, we don't know. But I want us to look at the ant, and I want us to look at the slug, and I want us to think about how could we live a significant life in simply saying yes to Jesus. But I think there's one thing 
that really does war against us living potentially a significant life of following Jesus. And I think it's laziness. I've got a definition for you that in my opinion, this is the Josh Bull definition. Laziness, you can write this down, is wasting the time we have. Wasting the time that we have. We only get so many years and the world will try to lull you to sleep. And I, I, I think if you can fill this in in the top on your notes that the plan of the enemy, there's an enemy trying to derail you, that there's an enemy trying to take you out. And this is what the enemy I think would have you do. Even coming off the gauntlet and all the things that took place is that I think that the enemy may derail you with dramatic sin but by lull, well, he may not derail you with dramatic sin, but by lulling you to sleep through your laziness. That it may not be some big grand sin, this big crazy thing that it's like, man, I feel so much shame for, I feel I've done all these wrong things. No, I think if he could just say, hey, let's just live a lazy life. Let's just live a life of comfort. Let's just live a life about you. If I can lull you to sleep, that what took place at Golan, it wasn't really that powerful. What God might wanna do with your life really isn't that significant. Let's just make you settle for a very lazy, sleeping type life. And what I wanna do for the next few moments is give you three ways that I think could help us combat maybe laziness in the life of a slug. And I believe it's gonna encourage us. And the first one is this, you can write this down, is that we wanna live with a hungry mentality, say mentality. Verse six, we're gonna look at it really quickly. It says, go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. I wanna give you 30 seconds to think uh, for a moment, and maybe write a sentence or thing that comes to mind when you read that right now. 30 seconds, think. You can keep that on the screen so they can all see it. 30 seconds, Right now, circle a word thing that maybe stands out to you. Go to the ant, O oh sluggard, consider her ways. Write out anything that stands out to you. The word for me that stands out when I look at this is consider, consider her. And be wise. Uh, I have a son. Some of you uh, got to meet him at Gauntlet, and we, we had so much fun meeting a lot of you. And uh, his name's Eli, and he says coolie doolies all the time. And, uh, but the thing about Eli is he's three, and uh, he's getting older right now, and he loves asking questions. Like he's always saying, why, 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 why? Well, every Wednesday morning, uh, I usually take him out for, for a little breakfast, just me and him to chat, hang out. He brings his chase car, and we talk about whatever a three-year-old wants to talk about. But he's always asking me questions. Why, Daddy? Why, why, why? Why do you like coffee? And I'm like, man, I love going down to the common house with you downtown Anderson and just hanging. I love it because it gets me joy. And he says, well, why do I eat a, uh, 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 what do I eat, Jay? It's, it's called a uh, cinnamon bagel. No, not a cinnamon bagel. That's my joke with him. I call it a cinnamon bagel. It's a joke. It's a cinnamon roll. It's delicious, full of sugar and amazing. Great way to start your day. But we're eating a cinnamon roll and we've got these little jokes with each other. He's like, why, why, why? Why does it have sugar? What's sugar? And he's asking me all these questions. Well, the joke for Eli today was he thought he was so funny. We'd finished, we had a cinnamon roll, I had my coffee. We were walking to the car to get, up, get the day started. And he thought, Daddy, we need to feed the car a cinnamon roll. It's like, what? He's like, Daddy, a car needs energy, so let's feed it a cinnamon roll. And so we get into the car and I'm playing along with this joke with him. He's like, ha, ah, let's give it a cinnamon roll. When you go and get inside, get a cinnamon roll for the car because it needs some energy to eat. And then I'm thinking to myself, no, I shouldn't be lying to my son that my car needs a cinnamon roll for energy. I need to teach him something. And so I say, no, buddy, he needs petrol. This car needs petrol. Has anyone, sorry, Taylor corrected me. Petrol, gas, okay? It's what we call it in Australia. It's translation, okay? Uh, you can go home, tell your parents, you learn about petrol. It's called gas. But I said, no, buddy, you need, it needs gas. I said petrol, to be honest. I said, it needs petrol to get into the car, to give the en engine, uh, I don't know what it really does, but it does something to the engine to get it going so the wheels can go so I can drive. And I'm thinking, wow, what a great dad, just teaching life lessons, you know, about petrol. Getting in the car, 
energy, go, science. I'm thinking to myself, man, it feels great to teach my son because he keeps asking questions. And I just wanna ask you, when's the last time you considered something? When's the last time you asked a question? When's the last time you took a posture of I want to learn? I think the marker of an ant or, or someone who's saying, hey, I wanna live a life of significance is saying, hey, I wanna take a humble posture. I wanna take a posture in my life where I can learn from one another. I wanna take a posture where I may have a lot of information coming at me and your generation is probably one of the most informed generations. You can find a lot of information on your phone really quick. You might walk out to your parents like, did you see the news? Did you see what happened? I saw this reel, it was amazing. Did you see? You can have a lot of information at you, but do you actually have wisdom in your life? Do you actually seek to learn from one another and have a life marked by humility and a life marked by I am hungry to grow and to learn? Because a slug will just kind of sit back like, hey, I'm good. And the proverb says to the slug, hey, I need you for a second to consider the ant. When's the last time you thought to yourself, man, I want to grow and I want to learn. But I think if we're being honest, pride creeps into our life. Maybe you try and put on a fake facade like, man, I'm good. I don't really need your help, man. Things are good at home. I'm good. You don't need to help me. I'm good. But I just say to you at Fuse, you can pull down the mask and be completely honest and be who you are and come ready to grow and learn together. You don't need to make the mistakes of generations that have gone before you can lean in and learn and say, hey, would you teach me? Pride can creep in. I think even in a church setting, some of you had an amazing experience at the gauntlet. God moved in a powerful way in your life and you came home, you're like, man, I'm part of the elite. Did you know what happened on Thursday night? Did you know what God did in the guys and girls session? It's amazing. And you start talking to all these people who weren't at the gauntlet and you're just like, man, God did it. And you kind of feel like I'm a part of the spiritual elite club, like I'm really, really good. Some of the fellas are doing the shred or reading through the Bible through like 90 days and a lot of you are reading your Bible right now. And you're like, man, I've got a lot of knowledge. And I'll say that that's not the way God wants you to live. He has better for you that we could live in humility and seek to grow and to learn together. But above all, would we be hungry for the things of God? Not just saying, man, I'm good by myself. I'm good in my own ways. I want to grow. So I wanna put some practical uh, tips before you that you can either write these down or take a photo for you. The first one is this, uh, for how to live with a hungry mentality is, uh, read your Bible daily. Uh, use a reading plan. A bunch of you on the Proverbs reading plan right now or reading through uh, the B90X, whatever it might be, 90 days. I just wanna challenge you again. I remember I was about 17 years old, 18 years old, I'd read through the whole Bible and I thought I've done it. I'm good. Like I've read through the whole Bible. I, I've, I've kind of got some knowledge, but there is so much more for you in the Word of God every single day. God wants to meet with you and, and, ch and challenge you be hungry for the Word of God. The second thing is this, is use a journal and be honest with God. You can write your questions down. You don't have to have a fake facade, like God, I'm all good, I don't need you. But if you, I'm literally right now with some friends, I'm, I'm reading through the Bible in 30 days and I get to some books of the Bible, I'm like, man, I got no idea what's going on in here. I write it in my journal so I can ask mentors and leaders and to help teach me, do the same. This is another thing, get great at asking questions. Get great at asking questions. There is no such thing as a bad question. Pride yourself. When I meet with young leaders and people who, who, who I can tell uh, got potential and things inside them, they ask really great questions. They keep, uh, they're hungry to grow and hungry to learn. Pride yourself on asking questions and learn from older generations. You've got amazing Fuse Group leaders and volunteers. Sit with them and say, hey, would you teach me? I've got questions for you on how to do life and I wanna learn from you. Learn from older generations. Honor them, respect them, respect your parents. Learn from them, have a hungry mentality. And lastly is this, say thank you all the time. I just think uh, we want to not be entitled. We don't wanna just think I deserve this. My life is perfect. I, I, I am entitled to this. Man, would we be the most grateful people? 
Thank you for the breath in my lungs, God. Thank you for the air-conditioned building that we're in tonight. Thank you for the chairs that I'm sitting on. I could be in horrible situations right now. I could be living in horrendous situations, but God, I am just so grateful. And say thank you to one another. Live with a hungry mentality. You ready for the second? Say second. Live with meaning. Live with meaning. We're gonna look now at verse Uh, seven to eight, and I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Team, you can bring that on the screen. And uh, I I want you to take 30 seconds to write down, circle any word that might stand out to you. Ready, set, go. Go. So this right here is about the way the ant's living. This is about how the ant is living. And one thing I love is uh, documentaries about sports. Are there any documentary, like if you've been watching Breakpoint, Full Swing, any of my sports people out there, it's just me and Tanner Duffy and these guys on the front row. T- t- I know. So, so let me just teach you. The thing I love, uh, yell at me, it can, might be sport, music, any kind of, any range of industry, just your favorite person, artist, whatever it might be, all right? On the count of three, all across the state, one, two, three. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence, what a guy. Uh, so one, one thing about all these people, whoever you yelled out, whatever it might be, they, listen, 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 listen. You might watch them in a game, you might watch them in a concert, you might follow them online, But the thing I love to see is the behind the scenes. The thing I love to see is the way that they come from. For me, I love watching sport. I love watching the recovery. I love watching when they go to the weight room and they're putting in the work and it's just them there. I love watching how they do their meal prep and what they're eating. I love seeing the unseen way that they're living because we see what's on public, but I wanna see the behind the scenes. And I just think we live in a world that cares so much about what people see, but we care so little for the unseen places in our life. And what we read here about the end is saying, hey, it doesn't need a chief, it doesn't need an officer, it doesn't need a ruler, it just gets going. And I wanna challenge us today is, you might have dreams, aspiration, things in your heart that you wanna do one day. Practically a few might be this, man, I wanna be a preacher one day. And I'll challenge you then, how are you with a vacuum and serving in the local church? I remember as a young guy, when I was about 20 years old, I'd just become a youth pastor at this church plan and I had this desire to preach and do these things, but I just thought, man, I'm gonna start working on this unseen. So I literally was, I used to live in the mother's room of a church basement, it's a story for another time. And I would just practice preaching by myself in a basement every single night, praying, doing these things, because that's what I wanted to do. Some of you wanna be a businessman one day and do business. When I ask you, one, do you have a job? Two, do you get there early? And three, are you a good employee? How could you have dreams for one day if you're not stewarding what's in front of you today? Some of you wanna be a great school teacher. Well, how are you as a student today? Some of you want to be an athlete. And I'd ask you, well, how's your character today? There are all these things that we might wanna do with our life, but how are we living in the unseen places? I, I love about the ant that it makes the most of today. It makes the most of of the day that we have. It doesn't just put off excuses tomorrow, 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 but it makes the most of today. What's on the agenda tomorrow? It might be just chilling, it might be hanging with a friend, whatever it might be, could you just simply say, hey God, would you use me in every single moment today? Maybe tonight you need to clean the dishwasher for your parents, like just go crazy, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it might be, saying, hey God, In this chapter of my life, it's you and me. I've got things in my heart, I put them before you, but I wanna seize today and live with a plan for tomorrow. But the other thing it says is that it prepares the bread in the summer. I just read this like, you can do hard things. Who knows it's hot right now? Like it is hot out there. No one else thinks it's hot out there, it's just me. It's hot, like it's hot middle of summer. The thing about the summer is it's hot. 
but you can do hard things. This little ant's going out, man, I gotta go get my food. It's scorching hot out here, but I'm dying on this concrete. Let me go get some food. But it's saying, hey, you can do hard things. Right now, I'm trying to teach my little man, Eli, uh, that he's gonna win and lose in life. And how am I teaching him this? It's through WWE wrestling before bedtime I'm all at home. Like, I'm like, it's me and him, we're putting in the work. I've got him in arm bars, body slams, you name it. Like, I'm teaching him all the tricks of the trade. And at first, like, he would cry every time he lost because you know I'm not letting him win. Like, I'm like, I'm, this, is, this is, I'm the dad of the house. And so I'm out here putting, putting moves on him but I thought, man, maybe I should let him win occasionally just to kind of get, get him feeling good about himself. But I had, was teaching him, buddy, in life you will win and you will lose. And I just gotta tell you, you can do hard things, Fuse. You don't just have to eject when life gets difficult. You don't have to eject when it gets challenging. You can do hard things. Jesus promised us that he will be with us but he did not say you're gonna walk through life frolicking and thinking it's all perfect. He said, no, I will be with you. I've overcome the world. You will have challenge in this world. So you can do hard things. And I just look back on my life, that hardship, suffering, difficulty that I've walked through, God has met me there. He has shown himself to be true. And I look back and I, I have grown through it. So I just wanna say to you tonight, you might, so many of you I know are going through difficult things. Divorce of your parents, death of a loved one, financial difficulty, whatever it might be, God is with you, He will redeem and He will restore and I promise you that He will meet you where you're at and you will grow through it. So I've got some practical things for us of living a life of meaning. You don't need to just coast through life, live a life chasing the American dream. God has a design and a purpose for you. And here's some of the practicals that I have for you. Uh, Make a plan for your day, your months, and your future. I just want you to think about it. Like, how do you wanna use your day? Like, what do you wanna do tomorrow? Do you wanna just sit on the couch and watch TV all day or scroll on your phone all day? No, I wanna do something. I wanna read, I wanna grow, I wanna learn, I wanna, whatever it might be. Then I wanna challenge you the months ahead. I wanna challenge you in Fuse Group. What's your plan for the coming school year? How do you wanna impact your class? How do you wanna impact your teammates? How do you wanna impact your workplace? What's your plan for the fall, for living a life of meaning and saying, God, would I wanna partner with you in it? A few practicals, get your screen cut time down to two to three hours. Like some of you need to just throw that phone away It's wasting your life, just scrolling, scrolling, man, go live life. Another one, stop complaining and be an encouragement. Man, would we just simply, you don't need to go around dragging, complaining, man, life sucks, this, 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 but be a life-giving person, encouraging. Practical again, get to work early and work hard, whatever it might be. Practical way that I think about work, whether it's sweeping, cleaning, cutting grass, whatever, you are doing it all for the glory of God. You're not just doing it for your boss. You're not just doing it to get a nice paycheck. Whatever it is, God will meet you. Think about young, young uh, David out in the fields. No one saw him, but God was shaping him and molding him till the day with the Goliath comes. He was ready to go because he'd been working hard in the obscure places. Use this chapter of your life to develop and to grow. Two more practical, lean into your fuse group, man. Make this the best time uh, for your fuse group. Like be vulnerable, lean in, in community in one another, lean into one another. And then another way to live a life of meaning, in my opinion, is to serve uh, practically in Kids Spring and be a generous person. Live a life of meaning. And the third one is this, as we bring our time to a close, is we wanna live on mission. Live on mission. What I want us to do now is take 30 seconds and just think about uh, these three verses and what maybe stands out to you. You can write uh, them down on, on your notes or in your notebook. The, verse nine, verse 10, verse 11. A little sleep, a little slumber, 
a little folding of hands to rest. The cry of the slug, this is about the slug right here. And the cry of the slug is just a little more, just a little more. Maybe it's a little more sleep. Wake up, man, I was gonna wake up early to have a quiet time and read my Bible, but I'm gonna hit that snooze button because it feels nice in this bed. It's so nice. Maybe it's you were gonna go meet with some friends to have Fuse Group or go hang in your community, and, but you thought, man, I just watched one more TV show. Like my latest favorite season just came out, so I'm gonna miss Fuse Group this time. I'm just gonna lean in and watch one more TV, just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more Instagram. Like I just wanna keep refreshing and looking at other people's lives and a little bit more TikTok and looking on here rather than going and living life. Maybe it's you got a girlfriend or a, guy, girl, a, girlfriend or, or a boyfriend and you're like, just a little more kissing. Hey, it's real. You have these ideas of setting boundaries and things for your life, but there's a little whisper of you, man, just a little bit more. And all of a sudden you're doing something that you never wanted to do. Maybe you're hanging out with a friend and they start gossiping and talking badly about someone and you just think to yourself, man, maybe just a little bit more gossip. I'm gonna talk badly about this person so I can make myself feel good. We get more and more when we say just a little bit more, but we feel less and less dignity, less and less self-control, less and less peace. A little more, it's just like all these little surrenders, taking back ground. And my friends, God is enough. You didn't need to say just a little bit more of the world, just a little bit more of what that has to offer, that relationship has to offer, just a little bit more over here. But my friends, Jesus is enough. My friends, would we change the cry of just a little bit more of the world and say, man, I just want a little bit more of you, God. I just want a little bit more time in your presence. So I'm gonna get up earlier and wake up and I just want more time with you. I just want a little bit more of your words. I'm not gonna watch that show because I, I wanna just keep watching, but God, I want more time reading your word. God, I want more, more prayer. So I'm gonna wake up and go maybe pray while I walk around outside. I want just a little bit more hope. So I'm leaning into you, God, because you're my source of hope. Just a little bit more. Would we change the narrative from being just a little bit more of what the world has to offer and live a life on meaning. Because I looked out when I was at the gauntlet seeing thousands of you worshiping God. And I truly believe in what God is doing in and through you. I believe that the days ahead of Fuse are better than they've ever been. I believe God is working in and through the young people of South Carolina. I am so confident of it. But my friends, Jesus will forever be enough. Don't settle, settle for the sluggish way of living, buying the American life. You need to live a certain way. Live a life that says, Jesus, I am following you. He is the perfect example of how to live. But He's not just some morally good teacher. He's a friend to know. He's at work. I watched it. So many of you put your faith and trust in Jesus at the gauntlet. So many of you said, yes, I will follow you. Live a life of obedience and saying, Jesus, I will follow you. And that's been the story of my life that I'm trying to say yes daily. I don't always get it right. I remember many years ago, I was wanting to be playing football and doing this one, one path and God one day whispered to me, Josh, would you build my church? And I went on a journey in council and thought, man, I wanna give my days to serving the church. I quit football and all of a sudden found myself at a church plant in a city I'd never been in. I remember my first day being a quote unquote youth pastor and two kids rocked up. And I thought, this is awesome. They're here, people came, I can't believe it. I ended up getting married to Taylor and our journey continued on and I felt, 
many, many years ago, maybe a whisper in my heart of what a life on mission could look like of I wanna keep building the church and not just the church, but I wanna see young people like you give their life to following Jesus. Go and impact schools, go and impact communities, go and follow Him. But I felt many years ago, a whisper, maybe a dream to one day plan a church maybe. And that's kind of been like a dream in my heart for many, many years. In 2017, I jumped on a plane with Taylor and I want Taylor to come up here can make some noise for Taylor she, she's in the room in in 2017 these two little Aussies jumped on a plane and uh, we came to be a part of what God was doing in and through this church if you're new to here we're a church in 14 cities all across the state and we just love what God was doing here we only knew a couple people and we jumped on into this big old family and I've had the privilege of being a pastor here for a while now and done different things and served in different ways, but we've still had this dream in our heart of maybe one day planning a church. And uh, We've been in conversation recently with the elders and le the leadership team of, of this house over the past few months of feeling like God calling us to, hey, would you keep living on mission? Because right now what, what we're doing is like a dream. We love what we're a part of. But we've just felt a whisper of saying, hey, would you live on faith, take a faith step again. And practically what I felt God say is, hey, well, I want you to enter into a season of preparation again. And so practically we have made a decision for me personally that in August, I'm gonna be taking a step off staff as a pastor here. And, but in that we will still be living in and a part of this community and still here to serve and still be a part of what God's doing. And, I'm just a small little part of the puzzle at Fuse. There are so many amazing Fuse pastors and group leaders and a great legacy behind us and a great legacy before us. But I just want our story to be a life of a story of faith. And so one day we, we plan maybe to, if God would will allow for us to one day maybe plan a church. But in this next season, I believe God's calling us into obscurity to prepare for the future. And we wanted to put that before you because we want you to, we don't wanna just tell nice words, but we want to live this out ourselves. And so what I wanna do uh, in this moment is ask Pastor David Hall to come on stage. Can we make some noise for Pastor David Hall? And uh, my last thing to say to you is, uh, we're still around. We, we have the highest love for the leadership team of this church. And um, we, we are just full of faith for what God's doing in and through Fuse. And these are really great days. And so I just wanna challenge you, man. Live hungry for God. Live a life of meaning for Him and live on mission for Him and keep leaning into what God is doing. So David, I'm gonna pass it to you. Awesome, awesome. hey, let's, let's do this. I, I wanna take a moment and just honor Josh and Taylor all together. So across the state, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna pray for them. And then after we pray for them, uh, we're gonna think about some things specifically for us to take away from this right here because what you're seeing is an example, an example of living a life on faith. Uh, and, and you know what? Lots of faith steps don't make a lot of sense sometimes and they're difficult. But how do we make the most of every one of these ping pong balls, every one of these years of our life and it's living a life of faith and you're seeing that in Josh and Taylor uh, and, and, we're, and we're, we're excited uh, for you and we're honored. Uh, to be a part of this journey with y'all. So let me, let's, let's all fuse across the state. Let's bow our heads and join me in prayer. Uh, Father, thank you so much for Josh and Taylor. What wonderful, wonderful uh, people of God they are. God, what a great family they are. God, bless them, bless their, their, uh, their children and bless their marriage and bless this season of preparation. Would you pour out your spirit and would you speak so clearly to them in this time, God? And would every single dream on, on, that you've put on their heart, God, would they see it come to fruition, God? Would you answer every one of their prayers with a big and beautiful yes, God? Would you move powerfully in them and through them and whatever uh, it is that you have for them in the future, uh, God, that it would be more uh, than they could ever imagine, God, more with you, God, that, that their relationship with you would be closer than, than they've ever experienced. Their intimacy and closeness with, the, with you would be, would be uh, just 
so refreshing and life-giving for them, but also, God, more when it comes to fruit for the kingdom of God. Would you bless them? We, right now, as the leadership of this church and as this ministry, few student ministry, every student, every leader, we bless them. We bless you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you guys in Jesus' name. And if you guys would, remain in this posture. Actually, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and think, what step of faith based on the message you heard tonight might God be asking you to take? Is there a conversation you need to have with someone who you know they don't know Jesus and you need to talk to them? Maybe you need to, maybe your relationship with your mom or your dad is not right right now and you need to have a conversation with them. Maybe, listen, as you're getting ready to start school, hey, get ready, it's happening. Maybe you need to think about starting a ministry at your school that's gonna help reach your school for the sake of, what is the next step? What step of faith might God be asking you to take? As a matter of fact, right now, why don't you ask him? Say, God, what step of faith are you asking me to take? we're going to do, I want you to write that down. Whatever came to your mind, whatever God's saying to you, write it down. Write it down. And here's what I'm going to tell you. We got some questions for you to discuss in your group time, but maybe the most important thing you could do in group time is share the step of faith that you feel like God told you to take. And if you feel like God didn't speak to you, it's okay. Talk about that. Keep praying, keep asking, and I promise you he'll speak to you. I'm gonna pray for us, and then we're gonna hand it off to every campus. We're gonna do some worship. Okay, Father, thank you again. Thank you for being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for your word and for Proverbs. Thank you, God, for the example of the ant. Help us to live lives on purpose, to live lives of meaning, to not waste our life but to invest our life for the sake of the kingdom. Speak to these students in Jesus' name, amen.